Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Deep Three podcast. Today's guest is Elter, El- Elston Turner Jr., uh, Texas A&M alum. I wouldn't say alum. You're like a, a Hall of Famer over there. I mean, you nah, only have two years. Not, not, no Hall of Famer, man. No Hall of Famer, but, uh, you know, I have, had some good times there, though. Had a couple good games. A couple of good games? <laughs> is that what Kentucky says, too? Hey, they, they Kentucky would say that was luck, but, I mean, <laughs> You can call it, you can call it what it is. <laughs> I say it's a good game. Yeah, man. So uh, I'm excited to have you on, man. Because uh, you know, since you came from Greece, we talked a lot about basketball. We used to talk NBA and stuff. You know, of course, I mean, your dad's an NBA coach. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so so basketball is in your blood, right? And uh, I was, uh, you know, when I first came to the team. You know, like, we didn't know what to expect, right? So, like, once you start hooping, you can, you, I mean, you can see guys that have a basketball background, right? Like, mm-hmm. so as soon as you came to the team, it would be easy for you to, to play with us, to gel, uh, just because you're basketball IQ, right? I mean, you just read things differently, and it was, uh, for me, it was cool. You know, I, th- I thought we, we needed that. Unfortunately, we could have finished the season because I thought we could have could have made some noise. Uh, and things were just clicking. Um, but how have you been, how have you been, man, just training, and that's it? Just stay in shape for next season? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically what I've been doing, you know. Uh, like you said, didn't get to, to finish the season out in Greece. I wish we would have because, like you said, I felt like we had a great group of guys. Um, and, you know, we all bought into the system. And uh, I feel like, you know, we would have, you know, we would have made some type of a run, you know, for the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we, we were going to get hot at the right time. And I feel like that, that would have. That, that uh, it's a shame because I felt like we were going to do something special for that year, but uh, but yeah, man, I'm just um, you know I'm in here in Houston and I was trying to stay in shape, do as do as much as I can to stay in shape and uh, just to, to stay ready for wherever I'm going to end up for this next uh, upcoming season. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to rewind a little bit because I know what you went to Washington first, then you transferred to Texas A&M, right? Yeah. Uh, so I've been to the same kind of situation where I went to Mason and I transferred it. Same thing like you. It worked out for me, right? So I just want to, mm-hmm. you know, take me through that. Uh, like, why did you transfer? Because everybody right now talks about the transfer culture. You know, why do kids transfer so much? And, you know, I, I know my reasons. So I just want to see, you know, what was going through your mind. And, you know, when you went to a great school, you know, Washington. But, uh, like, why, why, why did you thought that transferring was, was your best option? Uh, well, for me, you know, we had, you know, we were a really, really talented school. We had so many, you know, we had so many great players. I came in with the same class as Isaiah Thomas. And we came into that school already having Justin Dittman, Quincy Pondexter, Justin Holiday, uh, John Brockman. Um, like we had, we had so many players that, you know, still are playing professionally right now to where my role was really, just to sit in the corner, uh, you know, and, and if I was get the ball, just knock the shot down. And, uh, you know, it got to the point to where anything else besides that, I, I felt so uncomfortable doing. You know, I was all, I've always been a scorer. I've always been able to handle the ball. Uh, you know, I played point guard all, you know, three years, three out of the four years in high school, um, even in AAU. So being able to switch into, like, just to being a regular spot of a shooter kind of, you know, it, it kind of slowed my slowed my progression up, and um, I just remember after we lost in the NCAA tournament my sophomore year, uh, I ended up talking to my dad, and you know, we were just t- talking about my next move because I just felt like I wasn't y- utilizing my potential and showing everybody what I could do uh, offensively as well as defensively, but just being on the floor in general. Um, and, you know, we came to the conclusion that I had to, to transfer somewhere to where they were going to let me show, you know, show my skills. Because if I would have stayed in Washington and just play, been that spot-up shooter role, I guarantee you I wouldn't be to where I am today. And um, so I think me transferring, uh, it, it, it changed my basketball career completely. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it was, it was the same for me too. So uh, I, I just feel like, you know, I love the school, but, you know, it just it wasn't working yeah. out. For what I want to do after, right? I mean, I want to play pro. You probably want to play pro. So it's like, you know, what am I doing? And well, I mean, because it, it got to the point. It got to the point to where, you know, I, I would I would go back and watch some of the games. 
and I'd occasionally, you know, make a play off the dribble and get to the basket and lay it up. And then I hear the announcer saying, you know, oh, he's not used to doing that. You know, he's a spot or shooter. And I'm like, I'm like, man, man. Look, <laughs> you know, you said show my, hey, y'all show my high school. Show my school. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, but, but that's how, but that, it, it, but it also is a mind game, you know, because once you go a year or two without having that role, it, you know, it, it took a minute. So I had to use my red shirt year to get all of my, you know, get all my tools back. I got into the gym and started working on pick and roll, started working on post up, started working on, you know, isolation and just being able to score, uh, besides, you know, just catch and shoot and coming off the screens. And, um, that's why I said, you know, that, that, that red shirt year is probably the most crucial year of my, of my life because, you know, you're not playing games. So you had to focus on literally, you know, your, your game individually and then academically. And that, and, and that's it. You know, that's, that, that was your whole year was dedicated to that. And, um, that's why it's what I said. It's just, that was the, the turning point of my basketball career right there was my red shirt year. Yeah. I mean, I say the same too when I transferred. That was, that was it. You know, I was like, okay. I was kind of same situation. I think just different, uh, you know, position on the floor, but uh, you know, just purely stretch forward. And I was like, I wanted, I can do more. I want to do more. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, that was one of the things that uh, when I transferred, I was like, I want to go somewhere. You know, let me, you know, let me play. Like I was like, don't, you know. And when I had a call, it was like NC State, and I was like, no, they're gonna, that's like, you know. I was like, they're gonna put me right back in that box. You know, I was like. I can't go to that level and just do that same thing. To go down, you know, it's like yeah, down and down level. And I was like, All right, just let me do what I do. Let me get better, you know. Let me get stronger. And then, you know, uh, that really turned around for me. I think, uh, you know, and like I saw, you, you scored a bunch of points. You know, it was like that's I saw a lot of similarities when I looked at that. And then once you turn pro. Did that approach change at all, or like once you found a good college, you kind of just because well, not it, you know it, how, you know how it is in Europe. So yeah, I mean, it, it didn't change. It, it kind of heightened because you know how it is over there for to to be in Europe and to be a, a an American guard, like you have to score. That's like you know nine, you know eighty, ninety percent of the time. So you were in heaven, <laughs> huh? Yeah, exactly. You know, you have like that's your job. You know, if you're not scoring. Especially some places, you you know, you have one or two bad games. They're thinking about sending you home. So it you know it, it adds pressure and it adds pressure to your game to perfect your craft and, and do what you're good at. You know, you, you're not going to go over to a team in you know in Europe and try to try stuff that you haven't done. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. So and and, and teams know that. You know, they they pick you for a reason. Um, and some teams don't. But uh, for me, yeah, it was as soon as I went to Italy for my rookie year it was like I gotta score that's the only you know that's the only way I'm gonna keep my job I gotta put up as much points as possible um and you know win or lose yeah, you know, about 17 right I, <laughs> my, my, my rookie year yeah I, you know I, we, we, right we now. Had, we, yeah in Pesaro we had all rookies all rookies man so like it was a honestly it was a fun time but it was no expectations because nobody thought we were gonna be you know good anyway we had all rookies and um you know, playing against them big teams like Milan and Bologna and Brindisi, you know, it was, it was, it was tough, but, um, that being said, like you said, I, I got to, you know, just play stress-free and have fun. And, and that, and that was, that's why I was able to score, you know, 17, 17 points a game. Yeah. I mean, you had a good time in Italy and I know we talked about like, how much you like that league and how much you like the life in Italy. Uh, so is it any point even asking you what's it, what your favorite league is or? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you got me right there. It, it's, it's definitely, I've played in three, three, three and a half league. Um, but I, I would say, you know, Italy is probably, uh, my number one just because, you know, I'm so used to it. Um, you know, I know pretty much all the Italian players, pretty much, you know, most of the Italian coaches, all the refs. It, it's just something I'm used to. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess I, I tell people all the time, it's my second home. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we speak the language, you know, I mean, I know me and you had talked about, you know, just being out there and being able to speak the language and, uh, you know, I, I love Italy and, um, you know, if I ever have an opportunity to play there again, um, uh, you know, I, I'd be honored. I can't wait. So, but yeah, I, I would go Italy. Germany was, uh, all right as well. 
I guess what was the difference as far as like playing style? I played in Italy. I know how it is. Um, um, just compare say, Italy to Germany and maybe Greece a little bit. I would say Germany was the most physical league I've been in. As far as physicality, Germany was very physical. You know, they would have a big seven foot German that's just moving screens. And, you know, and every time you get hit with a screen, you're looking at the ref like, and the refs looking at you like you know you got to get up you know you have to get up it's a, it's a legal screen um it, it, for that aspect i would say germany is probably more phys- most physical league um italy i think has the most skill um and then greece i would say it's a combination of the two uh you know you know how it is in greece it's very physical we were just fortunate to be on the most physical team of the league. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? We we brought the physicality to that game. To, to, we to made it. Out there. <laughs> exactly. I, I got I got a couple couple of my friends that we played against, and uh, they always tell me, man, we used to hate going to that island because y'all, all y'all do is just hack and foul, and we don't get no calls. I'm like, that's how it is, man. You gonna have to, <laughs> That's the only way. That's, that's, hey, that's the way we played, man. We, 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 we sat down, we guarded you, and – you know, if you're gonna win, you're gonna have some bumps and bruises along that way. You know, it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's, it's like as long as they let you, uh, you know, do that, I don't see there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, nope. There's there's some leagues that I've been into where it's like any touch is a foul. You know, like uh, so you, you gotta adjust as a player. I think that's what, that's what I found really hard. Uh, you know, like in the VTB, for example, it was like super slow. I was like, what in the world? But it was like slow, but like physical. Like it was just, I don't know. It was just, you know, everybody was slower, but everybody was more physical and they need the basket. And he had like super quick guards, like good luck was in there. And I'm like, it was just such a like weird balance. It was like, no, you know, like, I don't know. It was, it was a little bit weird, man. You go to Greece this year and it was just... They let you get away with whatever. I mean, it's exactly. like okay for us, like on the island, yeah, for sure at home. Yeah, a lot of games too, like especially with the big teams. I'm like, you all get away with everything, like everything. You, you, we would start the game down ten before jump ball. I'm like, it, it, you know, and that's just how it is out there. You, you know, you're gonna have to if you, you know, you're gonna have to go in there and try and scratch out a win. Every 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 road game is is, is tough out in Greece and. Um, you know, that's, I, I, I like that that part of it as well. Yeah, I mean, I liked it, but it was just, uh, it would get to be frustrating too, right? Because, like, man, it's like this, this totally Oh, no, for sure. I, like, I, I, all right, you got to get used to it. Like you said, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and it wasn't even like, because, uh, like, it wasn't crazy strong as far as, like, physicals. I mean, that's, what, that's one thing. It was like, no. oh, my God. Like, when I remember the VTB, you know, like, some guy that was in the VTB straight out of the NBA. I'm like, that's physical. I mean, that's just yeah. strength. <laughs> Here, it was just a lot of, you know, it was just a lot of tic-tac stuff, like holding, grabbing. Yeah. Um, you know, like just a little bit here and there. So it was just... Uh, and refs don't call any of that. <laughs> any of that. For sure not. For sure not. But as far as teams, man, like where did... Where, okay, in Pesar, you had a lot of freedom, right? A bunch of rookies. Mm-hmm. But after that, like where did you feel really comfortable or like... What would you say like you were best used other than Pesaro, of course? Um, I would say probably Cremona. Um, I played in Cremona for, for two years. Uh, my third year was my first year there, and uh, we had a very good season. Um, I, don't, I think we finished, I want to say third or fourth uh, before playoffs, and I ended up re-signing to go back there before playoffs even started. So, you know, it was a, it was a great situation. Um, our coach had, you know, one coach of the year. Um, we had a lot of great players. We had, uh, we had James Sutherland. We had, uh, Deron Washington, uh, from Virginia Tech. We had Tyrus McGee. Uh, we had two Italian, uh, players that are on the national team. So we had a very, very good team. We were well put together. Um, you know, it was kind of, kind of like you were saying, you know, we, like I said, Americans are brought there to score. So, uh, basically we were just playing and then as soon as, the game gets into them clutch areas. It's like, okay, we're going to give Elson the ball. And as soon as we, you know, give me the ball, top up with two, three minutes left in the game, I just got to bring it home for him. And, and, and that's what we got good at. We we never really beat teams by more than 
five or six points, but we were just steady and steady at what we were doing and just did what worked. And then once we got to that point where we had to find a closer, it's just like, you know, give some, whoever's hot the ball. It was either me, Tyrus McGee. Uh, we had a center, uh, Mark uh, Cousine. You might know him. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we had a we had a lot of, of veterans on that team, so we just knew how to play the game. We knew how to come out with the win some way. Some, you know, some way we can come out with the win. Well, I mean, the most successful teams I've been on, it's just that. is knowing your role and the character. Mm-hmm. The guy's character is like if those fit. You, you can do anything. I mean, honestly, uh, you might not have the best players, but you're gonna have a really good chance to to beat a lot of good teams. And I know, uh, you know, Milano when I was in Italy, they had a good team, and for some reason they they just didn't gel. And those teams in Europe, especially, you know, the big ones, and you see every year in the Euro League. To me, that's that's the key to it. Is like how do those guys fit together? Yeah, you know, because if you have two three guys that are like really good and they got different agendas. You, you, you can, it doesn't matter. Your budget's not going to play for you. And I mean, just mm-hmm. look at Fenerbahce every now and then. Look at Tesla every now and then. It's just all the things like one, two guys who just not fit the culture. And, uh, you know, see, and, and go ahead. I'm saying that's what I, that's what I tell, that's what I tell like young college players that are trying to go to Europe and, uh, you know, trying to tell, you know, the, the, the younger generation. I'm like, look, you're not going to go over to Europe and average 20, 25 points a game. Like you watch people in, you know, you watch people in the States and in the NBA averaging 25, 30 points a game. All those top uh, Euro league teams, you know, Champions League teams that you got five, six players that average in between that 10 and 11 point range. And any of them on any given night can go off for 15, 20 points, you know, and, and that's how they play. You know, they, they play in a system that fits them. It was, Everybody was in that nine, nine, ten, eleven point range, and yeah. and you just have to you just have to play off of who's hot at that moment, basically. Yeah, I think one of the best teams I've been on was Stelmet in Poland. We played Euroleague, and we got the you know the, the top eight in the Euro Cup after. And I think all of us averaged. We had eight or nine guys averaging like eight and ten, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was just one of those things like. We knew who our closer was. You know, he's the boss most of the time. Uh, we had a Polish point guard, Kosharek, who used to just make big shots. And we just knew, like, what to do, when to do it. And it just took us a while in the beginning because uh, we had a lot of good guys, right? But it was just a matter of finding that rhythm, you know, who's – are you going to be aggressive early in the second or are you going to wait your turn? Or, but once we got clicking, it, it was, I mean, uh, you know, we'd be passing Icos at home. Uh, we'd be uh, locomotive on the road. Uh, we we'd be Karshiaka. So and then we went there and beat Unix in Unix we Saint Petersburg, and it was just one of those things that once it got clicking, it was over. And uh, you know, we knew like, okay, do what you do, and you know, at what point in the game you're gonna have to get those shots, and when not to get those shots. You know, when it, when it's okay to pass them up somebody else. So that's 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 a huge thing in Europe. Uh, to me now back to the nba man what, what do you think about this, this this tournament coming up right now i don't even know what to call it. it's like it's like a cup nowadays <laughs> like yeah, you know, it's, it's like it's, cups i'm like exactly what it's like, like. It's it's like, like a, a <laughs> some type of soccer cup but um i mean there's, there's pros and cons to it um you know I, I think that for the teams that absolutely have a chance to win i think that it's a good idea but I mean, you have some teams that it's like, it's really no point of you being there. So I think for the safety reasons that, you know, I don't think that they should, you know, I, I think it should have just went straight to the 16 teams, whoever was top eight in the West and top eight in the East, and then just had the playoffs right away instead of having those, you know, last couple of regular season games. I think, I think they're going to do those like basically those just scrimmages, exhibition games. That's why I see mm-hmm. them as like they just need yeah. to games before the playoffs so they don't just jump in. Because there's I mean there's gonna be rust, you know, I think. It's even if you worked out daily, it's it's just different. Yeah. So, but the thing know. is they got they got scrimmage games, but I think they're actually having games where, you know, because the Pelicans, for example, they're still trying to get into the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. So it's gonna be some big games for So them. they're gonna have some scrimmages, but then they're gonna have I think seven or eight regular season games. Yeah. To determine who's gonna get into those, you know, like some playing games to determine who's gonna get into the playoffs. And that's where I'm just kinda like, you know, yes and no, but 
uh, it's it's gonna be entertaining for sure because we've gone a long time without watching basketball. So I know, man. Just the next the other day is like I didn't have time time to watch the TBT. It is like I really wanted to because I heard everybody just raving about it. I'm like, was it that good or just like you know, just miss basketball that much? Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, TBT is you know, TBT is it, always it's, good. It's I like always good years. It's yeah. just it's interesting. It's like one of those. Uh, you started playing like kind of like AU, AU tournament, right? And now, it's, yeah. now you get really, really good players in it. And I was watching the last year, and it's, it's, it becomes more and more important, like knowing the guys you play with and who you have on your team. You know, like all yeah. the you know, sure. last year. And I was like, well, as soon as I looked at the roster, I was like, oh man, oh, that's loaded, like Euroleague guys, like top Euroleague yeah. guys. But then I realized that I watched them play a few times. I was like, they not, they can't win it. I'm like they're not gonna win it. So at some point, it's just gonna become team over, you know, over individual like individual skills. Yeah. And uh, that was, that was interesting to watch. And I want to see it this year too, you know, especially towards later stages. Uh, you know, see how that works uh, because those endings are crucial. Like I was, I watched that thing like the last two three minutes about every game, and I was like, oh man, it's like tie game, and you can win it, or you just bet. Wrong turnover going the other way, it's over. Like it's just that talk about pressure. That's like Yeah, I love I love I love how they how they do that ending. It's it's very entertaining to watch. Uh probably stressful if you're on the losing end of you know, uh, of the end of those games. But uh, you know, I, I love the little Elam ending that they got. Um but like you said, it's I think in the past when nobody really knew about the T V T it was just you know, find out the the best players you can get on the team and put them together. But now that it's getting more exposure, people are starting to call up people that they know and that who they played with, and that who have chemistry. And that's why you're starting to see all these, uh, you know, all these alumni teams. And uh, this year they got a team full of players that played in uh, Division Two. Yeah, no. and and, they, and you know, and they can hoop. Yeah, like you know, so they want to prove to them too. Mm-hmm. And, and so now. You know those type of teams that have the chemistry might be better, you know, than the teams that have more talent because, you know, like you said, it's it's you have all those teams full of talented players. At some point, you're gonna have those ego problems and everybody like, okay, my turn. Instead of just playing through, you know, whatever system and chemistry that that you could have, like like those alumni teams have. Yeah, no, but to me, the ending is great. I was like, I feel like it's even better. You know, you got a shot. The last shot, five seconds, you know, all that stuff that we imagine, you know, like you shoot your last shot. But this one, yeah. it, really, like, you miss it, it's going the other way, it's over. Like, you know, you can't be over it. So, like, you don't have, exactly. okay, I'm going to get my last shot in, I miss it. You know, like, regular game, we go to overtime where, you know, like, one of those things where this one is just, you keep going. Like, you miss it. It's like, you, it's, it's like you're playing at the park at that point. Exactly. That's what it. makes it fun, too, I think, too. It's just, it's, it's somewhat like they found a way to make it, uh, you know, like those summer runs, you know. Like, yeah. Know, we're going 21. All right, cool. And it's like, you know, it's 2020. Like, <laughs> it's life and death right there. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, 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 you can't, and you can't foul. You got to play perfect defense because if you foul, you, you go right to the free throw line. And that, to me, that would probably be the worst way to lose that game is if, you know, it's, it, it's decided on a free throw line. And, but no, I, I'm with you on that. No, I, I that's, like, that's the worst part, too, about it in general. Is just you can win on a free throw kind of thing, you know. Uh, if you ask me, that would be the last. You know, yeah. You can't win on a free throw. Like, check up, check up again. We found exactly. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. And, and like you said, you got to – it's especially with, like, money on the line, too. You got to have – to me, you got to have a good – uh, a good team chemistry like you, i don't I, if, if i was ever to play in a tvt i'd want to win or lose i'd want to do it like in the right way you don't want to lose because somebody got you know too hard-headed and wanted to try and shine you know if, if i lose i wanted to lose the right way you know hey that team was just better that team just made shots not it's, it's tough uh, like that kind of pressure it's not like it's it, you know like all right last it's not like, okay, last 30 seconds I can make subs, right? I mean, the team can make a yeah. run over like that, you know? Like, mm-hmm. they might need six points. They might be two back-to-back threes. You don't even get a chance to make a sub. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I like that. You know, I like that because it just uh, – you, you put pressure on guys to play both ways, too. Yeah. You can't 
Because you can't. You don't want. Hey, you don't. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want to be the floor and be like, "Hey, move out of the way." You you don't want to be the one. Yeah, you you don't want to be that one. The, Giving up the giving up the easy baskets during that time. That, that. <laughs> I know, right? Everybody is so mad at you. It's crazy. Sure. Now going back to NBA, man. I know uh, just a little bit earlier, Dad's a coach, and we talked about that. And there's a lot of people that think there's no defense in the NBA, and I always try to explain them. I'm like, it, it's. Do you understand how hard it is to play defense against the best of the best in a situation where you're mostly on an island? You know, like in Europe, you can pack it in, right? So you have this great sport yeah. in Europe, and uh, you know, like we played in uh, uh, in Greece this year. You know, we pack it in. We we make them make jump shots, make other plays, right? But I mean, you get a guy like James Harden, right? He plays for your dad. You get a guy like Russell Westbrook. I mean, it's we're like, oh, how can you not stop him? You know, it's like it's 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 not that easy. Like you do, you do all the defensive planning too as a coach in the NBA. You try to stop them, but you know this, this guys like right now that just they're impossible to stop to me. It, it's just how I see it offensively. With the rules too, I mean, I, I get it. This whole hand checking stuff. What's, yeah. wait, what's your take on that? I mean, I say Luca. Luca Doncic said it the best. He said it was a lot easier to score in the NBA than it is in Europe, which is true because there's so much space. In the NBA, I mean, you you can't. I mean, the most important thing is that you can't have a big in there for three seconds. You know, defense of three seconds is crucial. That's probably the most crucial thing because now you have those Russell Westbrooks, those Russell Westbrooks, those John ja Morants, those you know, people get to the lane in one dribble, and that's all you have to do. The NBA is all about beating you know beating your man. Whoever's in front of you, you have to beat him, and if you can do that. Then everything else is basically just making a read. Honestly, I can see that coaches in Houston too. Just like, huh? Exactly. <laughs> hey, man, exactly. I can see that coaches in Houston. <laughs> it, hey, that's exactly what it is, man. I mean, you have, like I said, you have special for for Houston example. You have them as, you know, they they don't have a center, so they're they're basically in a five out spread. And when you have somebody like Russell Westbrook surrounded by four shooters. That's tough to guard when you can't when you you know when when you are not allowed to really be in help position like that because Russell Westbrook can beat you by himself. That's the thing that I'm trying to explain to a lot of Europeans too. I'm like he just can't be there. So like if he goes there, he can't like he can't be stationary. So he got to meet him at a rim. You know, like the help side exactly. Of that. In Europe, you can stop him up high. You know, I can step up high and stop. You him. can already be in position jumps. before he drives. Yes. Yeah. Like, or I can discourage the drive even before. You're right. Mm -hmm. but, you know, guys like Westbrook, it's just, he'll go by you and it's going to be a foot race. Like, your help is <laughs> going to be in a foot race with him going downhill. Your chance, you're going to beat him at a rim. To me, that's why Gobert is, is so valuable now for Utah because he can be in those foot races and he's long enough that's going to block a lot of shots. Yep. Otherwise, there's not a lot of centers that are like, useful defensively you know it's like they got dropped down way far because they can't really play up high on the ball screen because they're gonna get crushed you know with this guy's just being so good at one-on-one -on -one, they can kill you if, if you're big such a good screen then it's over it's coming right yeah out. exactly and then the players in the nba are just are they just so talented it's just like you don't really there's really no scout report like if you were a a, a, a coach in the nba and you were writing up of game plan to how to stop kevin durant like what would you say <laughs> you really can't say but, i would say good luck that was it yeah, that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying you can't there's not there's nothing that you can do seven or foot, say to everything. stop you and even if there was a thing to stop like for example with james harden you know james harden is gonna step back you know step back threes or get to the rim and you still cannot stop it and that's one thing that is 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 tough about the NBA is that they're going to expose, you know, you're going to see what, like, like I said earlier, the, the craft, if you perfect what you do best. And for James, for James Harden, that's getting to the basket, drawing fouls, step back three, creating a but shot. Good at, to me, to me, Harden is, you know, when, when Kobe said, oh, I was using the rules to my advantage, mm -hmm. nobody kind of jumped up in the air like, oh, yeah, that's messed up. Harden didn't say it. Harden is just doing it. To me, that, that's exactly. Good. He knows the rules. So he knows, like, as soon as he feels your hip on the shoulder, like, he's swiping the ball right at you. Yeah. 
Like, he knows, and to me, it's high basketball IQ. To me, it's not that easy when you drive full speed to see somebody just stick a hand in front of you and just go with the ball right away. That's not like yeah. you think, like, it's not really like you're thinking about how to finish when you drive. You're thinking about a lot of things. To me, that would be at least, to me, that would be like, I'm not thinking about that. You know, like, I'm not thinking about, like, oh, I see somebody flying, like, a hand right in front of me, and I'm going to swipe the ball back two free throws, and I'm going to hit him with the ball when I drive. <laughs> you know, and they tried everything against James Hart, and people were like, nah, pick him up full court. I'm like, do you really want to pick up James Hart full court? I mean, <laughs> and I mean and, you know, and, and you've seen some of, the de- some of the defenses, you've seen some of the defenses literally just give him the whole right. They'll, or or you know, or they'll end up they'll end up behind him and like just force him to the to the basket so he doesn't get off to the step you know to the step back three. I'm just like the fact that you're that unguardable to where they're just giving you the lane to where it's like okay here you just got to drive into the help is 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 crazy to me. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. You just the NBA like what people don't understand. You know, uh, they don't play defense. Is they play the best defense they can within the rules. That's one thing, mm-hmm. and two, they're not guarding like you know, like there's no guy in the league in any rotation that can't do something elite. You know, even if it's just cutting and just crazy athletic, that's still elite. You know, like that's still crazy elite to me. You know, yeah. you cut and just throw it up there. And I'm gonna finish over everybody. Uh, you know, just know your role, and it, it's difficult. That's why, like. Yeah, I, want, I like watching EuroLeague. I watch it. But at the same time, I like watching NBA, too, just because of that. I think you mm-hmm. can appreciate the talent they got. And, you know, just the, the 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 physical, you know, the physical part, too, is how hard they work to get in that kind of shape. Yeah. And and, and, and that's the thing, like you said. It's, it's you know, like a lot of people that, you know, Europeans just assume that because everything is so high scoring, everything is that it's considered not playing defense. And, in, and you know, reality is kind of like, you know what, those, you know, them players are just so talented. And just by the NBA rules, it's, it's tough. It's tough to guard. It's tough to ask somebody to guard James Harden for 48 minutes. Like, it's it's impossible. You're, you're not going to guard James. Listen, you're not going to. Europe, I got my money on Cliff. He said on Cliff. <laughs> hey, I, I agree with that. Full court. Hey, <laughs> Cliff would be ready for that full court press for, for, for 40 minutes. That's Cliff right there. I agree on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but it, I mean, it's just impossible. Uh, you know, they say Nikola Jokic now, and I'm like, yeah, but, you know, Sabonis was doing the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. To me, you can't really compare him anymore uh, just because the rules have changed. Yeah, you can really compare what happened then. They could play zone against MJ. They could be in the paint. They can put him down whenever they want to. Versus now, so you can't really say Hart is more talented than Jordan as far as scoring or you know, who's better because they it, to me it's like they don't play the same sport almost. You know exactly. It's I mean, imagine like you know, just imagine if you were if you weren't allowed to touch Michael Jordan, imagine what would happen. You know, it, it's yeah. it's two different things. Like, <laughs> and so it's it's crazy, man. But. Uh, yeah, that's why I feel like I always go to argue with a European, you know, like, <laughs> all, all my European fellows. I'm like, jeez. No, I'd, I'd have been my fair arguments as well. <laughs> man, all right, Elston. Well, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. and It's been a good talk, and uh, we'll definitely stay in touch, and we'll see. Uh, I look forward to see where we sign next year. All right, thank you. Appreciate you for having me. All right, E.T. All right, man.